I love traveling and let's be honest, I pick my destinations based on the food. So Italy is a natural choice. I recently visited Milan. It was an amazing trip. Milan's up in the north in the Lombardia region and it's such a big bustling city and it's a city of contrasts. You've got the high fashion and you've got the fun casual street life. You've got modernity and you've got the, the history in the art and the architecture. And of course, the flavors, oh, delicious. I love walking through a city whenever I can. And you know what? A little rain won't even stop me. You just, you pick up the vibe of the city that way. And I take plenty of breaks, you know, popping in for a coffee here and there, stop for a piece of cake or pastry, maybe some street food. That's how you discover a city. What I've discovered about Milan is it embraces the food of all Italy. And of course, you can't go to Italy without eating pasta. And I had pasta quite a few times. I've even taken a few pasta courses here and there to really learn the skill of making it by hand. But you know me, I also love desserts. And I thought, can I turn a pasta into a dessert? And so coming home now, what I'd like to share with you is my recipe for a white chocolate and hazelnut filled caramelle pasta. That refers to the shape. And I'm going to serve it on a creme inglese, a creme anglaise sauce, and top it with some strawberries and toasted hazelnuts. You know what? This dessert is even adventurous for me, but I love that I get to use a different skill set, making pasta. It starts with the flour, which is a double zero flour. This is based on the Italian grading system. This flour is made with semolina wheat, and the double zero refers to the grind, so it's the finest grind. But it's actually a high protein flour, so it's perfect for pasta because it holds together well. And I will have to knead it to bring the pasta dough together. And this is a chocolate pasta, so I'm adding cocoa powder to the flour. It's up to you if you want to use Dutch process or regular. And being a dessert pasta, I do want to add a touch of sugar I'm only adding a couple of tablespoons of icing sugar. I don't want to add too much because, of course, when I boil the pasta, the sugar will melt, so I don't want the pasta dough to come out sticky. Just a touch of salt. And now I use a fork just to whisk this all together on my wooden board, just to combine it. Kind of works like sifting. All right, now the key is to make a well in the center of the flour enough to fit three whole eggs and a little bit of vegetable oil. There we go. And I'll crack the eggs one at a time into the center. And fingers crossed, it won't leak out. And the oil. And now all I simply do is take a fork and I start whisking the eggs in the center. And as I break up the eggs, I start pulling in some of the flour from the inside edge. And so it starts thickening up the eggs. And you do this carefully and slowly. And then as you mix, you'll notice you're kind of flattening out. You're widening that circle of flour, trying to keep the liquid in. And once it gets too thick and almost turns into a paste, you'll want to use a dough cutter or a scraper and use that to sort of pull the flour in as you mix. Once it gets too thick to use a fork, you set that aside and now you start using that dough scraper to cut in the rest of the flour. And then it becomes easier to handle with your hands. This will seem dry and crumbly at first. Don't be tempted to add more liquid, just keep working the dough. And I knead it until it doesn't change its consistency too, too much, but you will feel that it has an elastic texture to it within about three to four minutes. All right, now I'll divide the dough into three pieces and flatten them into discs. And you wanna wrap these and let them rest. You can do this a day ahead. You can even make the pasta dough and either chill it or freeze it until you're ready to use it. You just wanna pull it out and let it soften to room temperature before you start rolling it. And now it's time to make the filling for this pasta. 
One of the stops I made when I was walking around Milan was this amazing food hall, Mercato Centrale, located in the train station. And they had a handmade pasta station and the caramelli, these bonbon shaped pastas, just completely caught my attention. At the same time, I was actually surprised to find out it was a savory pasta. I just assumed if it was shaped like a candy, it would be a dessert pasta. It was filled with a prosciutto and cheese filling and then had a creamy cheese sauce made to order inside a wheel of Parmesan. It was so much fun and absolutely delicious. But I thought, you know what? I love the shape of the pasta. I'm going to make a sweet filling. So the filling for this pasta is a combination of white chocolate and toasted hazelnuts. I have my toasted hazelnuts here and it's important to toast them and peel them before you use them for two reasons, to really develop the flavor, but also so that you can get the skins off because they'll be bitter if you were to leave them on. So these take about 15 minutes in a 350 oven and then you just sort of jiggle them around on the tray or in a colander and let the skins fall away. And I've got white chocolate. I'm using white chocolate in combination with the hazelnuts because remember the chocolate pasta dough is not terribly sweet. This adds a lovely sweetness and it's important that you use baking or couverture chocolate. Sometimes it's sold in a block or squares and you want to cut it up before you add it. Now to add a little bit of simple syrup for sweetness and binding. Simple syrup is equal parts sugar and water cooked together and cooled. And then finally, a little bit of vegetable oil. And I want to pulse this until it's coarsely chopped, but I don't want to turn this into a paste. I want the filling to still have a presence inside each little bonbon of pasta. I'll transfer this to a bowl. And just like the pasta dough, you can make this ahead of time and chill it. Just bring it up to room temperature before it's time to roll the dough. So we've got the pasta resting, the filling made, but now let's take care of the sauce. If you're making a dessert pasta for a dinner party, you want to get all your components ready ahead of time so that all you're doing is worrying about assembly. So it's time to make the crema inglese or crema anglaise in French, and it is simply a custard sauce. To make my crema anglaise, I thicken cream with some egg yolks. So first, I have to heat my half and half cream, and I heat it over medium heat to just below a simmer. And now, I need four egg yolks for this recipe. I'll add my sugar. I'll also add a splash of vanilla to the sugar and egg yolks. And now, I'll temper in the hot cream by slowly adding it to the egg yolks, a little at a time, and then all at once. And this gets added back to the pot and you cook it slowly, again over medium heat, until it thickens up. I do want to serve this sauce warm with the pasta when it's time to plate it. So if you're making it ahead, you store it chilled and then just reheat it over low heat, stirring it often. Now it's time to roll and fill those pasta shapes. What you want to do is take your pasta dough, unwrap it, and then on a lightly floured surface, roll it out. But you need to roll it thin enough so you can fit it in the pasta roller. And sometimes you just have to give it a try. But basically, I'm going to roll long strips. The first few rolls through the pasta roller, you may find you have to dust the pasta with flour. After the second and third time you roll, you won't need to add any extra flour. So I'll fit this through the widest setting. And then I always like to repeat before I change to a setting thinner. There we go, so I've got this big long sheet. I'm gonna cut my long pasta sheet into two pieces, line it up here, and now, I actually picked up this fun little tool in Italy. It is a pasta cutter and it's meant these pieces move so you can change the shape. Uh, and it's absolutely perfect for the frilly ends of my caramelle filled pasta. So what I'll do is run it along the sides because this is three inches wide. And then I use the straight side of a pastry wheel to cut the individual portions about two and a half inches.
And then you put one to two teaspoons of that filling into the center of each. So it's very similar to making a ravioli or a tortellini. It's just a different shape. And I have to say, that trip to Milan was the first time I had ever seen that caramelle pasta shape before. How did I miss this in my whole pasta eating career? Okay, fourth time to shape the bonbons. I dip my finger in a little water and run it along one side. That way, when the seam meets, the pasta will stick. And now to roll it up. So just like rolling up a caramel candy, you roll it up and then you pinch the pasta edges together and make sure you get a good seal there. You don't want the filling leaking out the sides. And look at that. It's a perfect little bonbon. I love it. And think of that sweet filling with the hazelnut inside. Ooh, it's going to be so good. Ooh. Really want to pinch it together well so the filling doesn't leak out. Now, you want to chill your pasta until you're ready to boil it. You can also freeze the pasta uncooked at this point if you wish. I've got my pot filled with boiling water. I salt my boiling water a little bit, not as heavily as if I was cooking pasta for dinner. We don't want this to taste too salty, but you do need the seasoning. And I'm going to serve six per portion. And the nice thing about this dessert pasta, it only takes about three minutes to cook. I mean, that's fresh pasta for you. It is super quick. I have a bowl here with a couple pieces of butter, so I'll spoon out the cooked pasta into the butter bowl. That way I know the pasta pieces won't stick to each other. And here we go, a gentle toss. And now I'm ready to plate. So first, I'll put down the crema inglese. And now you can see why I picked a custard sauce as the base. It's meant to sort of replicate a cheese sauce, like an Alfredo sauce. When I was at Mercado Centrale and had the savory caramelle pasta, they actually poured it right into a whole wheel of Parmesan and let the cheese kind of get pulled as they stirred the pasta with a little pasta water. Oh, it was so good. But we're on the sweet side of things here. In goes the creme anglaise. Now I'll lay the caramelle on top of this beautiful custard sauce. A couple of fresh strawberries for a pop of color. A little more toasted hazelnut for added crunch. And then the finishing touch, you wanna take a block of white chocolate and grate it on top, just as if you were grating Parmesan cheese on a pasta dish. And that white chocolate will melt in beautifully. Oh, what an absolutely gorgeous plate. I love that you can tell instantly that this is chocolate. Look at that color. Oh, and the texture. You've got the creamy sauce. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, and that filling. Just like a good pasta dish, it has that well-cooked pasta, an interesting filling, a delicious decadent sauce, and what a way to relive my time spent in Milan. And who would have guessed that a bowl of pasta would inspire a brand new dessert? I really hope you'll give this recipe a try and get adventurous in the kitchen. Make your own dessert pasta.